Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in the Church Dogmatics by Carl Bart. We have been looking at Part 4, the Doctrine of Reconciliation. We have moved into the final volume of the Study Edition. That's a uh, Volume 30 of the Study Edition. We're looking at the foundation of the Christian life in, vol in paragraphs 74 and 75. In this lesson, Bart shifts over to examining baptism theologically, and he wants to uh, consider baptism theologically in a formal and in a material way. Let's begin by taking a look at Block 1. We're going to look at uh, baptism theologically considered the formal problem. Bart says that baptism uh, is a perceptible form. It's an action which copies and reflects um, in its action, it reflects the action of the divine change. So water baptism is a reflection of the divine act, which previously had taken place. It is the bearer of the word spoken within it. Bart says that the, there is a divine word spoken within the act of baptism. It draws a picture of word and it presents word. It is a visible attestation to the church body of the person of Christ and of the divine act. So it is a perceptible form. And secondly, in note two, baptism is a communal participation. It is the acknowledgement of the candidate as a member of the church body. There is always an anticipatory readiness for baptisms within the church. It is the first human answer to the divine act of Atonement. The total community is represented as present in this act. So baptism is the church body as witness to the world. In this act, it is not only the candidate um, seeking affirmation from the church body, it's also a, a visible presentation of word to the world. And its theological meaning is relation between candidate and community. Essentially, it is a meaning of relation between candidate and community. So if we look at note three, the uh, summary note, the perceptible act and the communal act reach the hopeful act. And here's where uh, Jürgen Moltmann, Bart's successor, picked up, of course. It is an act of hope in Christ, and it only becomes hope as a free act. It is our free commitment to God's future, to the promise in Christ and in God's future. Through the Holy Spirit, we are freed for life in Christ. We have to have that enabling freedom. We are acted upon in God's free election. It is always, um, our baptism is always a genuine human decision in response to God's divine act through Christ. Bart says that 3G, only those according to their understanding and according to their judgment are ready for baptism. They have to reach that point of understanding. It should be taken up by the candidate and the community as an obedience of faith, as an ethical obedience of faith. And it is to be enacted in an atmosphere of quiet conscience. So it's an, it, it's an act of obedience. It's an act of uh, faith. It's a... Uh, a humble and quiet conscience that envelops it. And that gives us our first uh, inserted theoretical triad for the theological consideration of baptism. Baptism is a reflection. It reflects the word of the divine act of salvation. It reflects the word of the divine act. Baptism is a communal relation because the candidate seeks acknowledgement and solidarity with the body of believers. When they uh, rise up from the baptism, they want to hear the confirmation of amen from the body of believers. They want that uh, acknowledgement and solidarity with the church. So through this reflection of word and this communal relation, baptism becomes hope in God's promised future. As we grow in understanding of the word and grow in obedience to the closest call of Christ. So reflection, community, and hope 
is our first theoretical triad and from here we've got to move on to the concrete. In block two this time the concrete is called the material problem. So Bart wants to address the material problem which will be uh, the concrete look of uh, discerning reflection, community, and hope. Bart says that uh, in baptism we take a view to God's word as promise. God responds with a new work to the candidate who comes to baptism. There's a uh, we get baptized as a act of obedience to our work of God within us in salvation, but then in baptism God responds with another new work to the candidate. Because baptism is enacted before the countenance of God himself, the command and promise of baptism comes from the otherness of God, the Creator, the God, the Father who seeks to save us. So the promise of word takes the human reason of the uh, candidate captive and creates a readiness to receive revelation. God gives us this new work of a readiness to receive the revelatory, revelatory word of God, of God and Christ in spirit. The content of this promise is that we are to be renewed by the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit every day, continually. The content of promise, the concrete, I should say concrete, the concrete content of promise is that we are to be renewed by the en enlightenment of the Holy Spirit, the enlightenment of the Parakletos, the Parakletos as Holy Spirit. So baptism is our is the candidate's grasping of the promise of God in hope. Now if you look at note two, the material promise next transitions to the material conversion. We're dealing with very concrete conversion here, says Bart, and it combines the leaving of the old path of the ego and entering upon the new path of agape self-giving. We leave the old path of ego and we enter upon the new path of agape self-giving. The candidate is confessed as a new member of the community by the community. The candidate enters into the solidarity of ministry with the church the candidate reaches turning point, that metanoia, turning point, from self and anxiety to obedience and hope. The metanoia turning point is the turn from self and anxiety to obedience and hope. So initially it is a conversion in metanoia repentance, but then it becomes a resolve toward new creation. The candidate's baptism also serves, says Bart as a reminder to the church body to reaffirm its hope in divine promise also. We witness baptisms and we are reawakened ourselves as we witness baptism in the church. And so if you look at our summary statement in note three, the material promise and the material conversion lead to material resolve. So the concrete triad is going to be promise, conversion, resolve. The theoretical was reflection, community, hope, and now concretely it's promise, conversion, resolve. Through knowledge of the word and scripture, it is a conversion that is central, not incidental. It, it addresses the central motivational base of our being. It's effected through knowledge of God's word and the scripture. The depth and the significance of this act and the recognition by the church of this significance actually caused that fall into interpreting it as a sacramental mysticism. That was a mistake, but the church did realize just how significant baptism is, and unfortunately it uh, fell into this uh, false sacramental mysticism. But Bart says, take a look at Luke 7.29, and then you will see that uh, the truth that's really being attested to here is that Believers justify God by being baptized. The rejection of baptism was to reject God's will. It is not an assent to abstract truth. It is concrete attestation to God himself as subject as revealed in Christ. 
Therefore, the candidate is baptized into a hunger and a desire for righteousness, for dikaiosune righteousness. So now we can look at the uh, promise, conversion, and resolve as the uh, concrete inserted triad. Baptism anticipates the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit, which is promised. The turn of repentance is confessed in baptism and in solidarity with uh, the ministry of the church. We reach a growth and resolve through a growing knowledge of Christ's word. We grow in the resolve of will, of living as modeling Christ in our life, as those who model Christ in their life. And that's going to take us on to block three. Now, if you look at block three, we're going to take a look at uh, hope and God's future and resolve of will lead to the desire for righteousness. So here's your conclusive moment. Hope and resolve lead to desire for dikaiosune righteousness. Righteousness comes through our response in baptism. We negate all sacramental mysticism. We are baptism into an, an expectation of God's judgment of grace because his judgment of grace is promise to the believer. It is a judgment of grace. We anticipate and expect this uh, advent of the judgment of grace daily. We look for advent through the Holy Spirit continually. It is a confirmation of grace because it is before God and it is before his approval. We are impelled by our conversion to seek baptism as our first obedient act. It is our first act of obedience of faith. Now, after conversion and baptism, the believer enters into the sustaining work of Christ's Lordship, which is knowable in word and scripture. It is Christ's truth in his exousia power of uh, containing the entire divinity of the Godhead. It's a knowing which we acquire because of the sending of the Son. Living under Christ's Lordship exhorts us to an ethic of recognition, seeking to posit works that will unveil and actualize. Remember that energia, actualization term we learned, and to energia, actualize God's kingdom. So Bart says, take a look at 1 Timothy. We are called into exemplary Christian modeling, or tupas tone pi stone. Tupas tone pi stone, which means to be an example to all other believers. Be a tupas example to all others. And tupas means to imprint Christ into your heart. It actually, actually means imprint. So imprint Christ in your heart and then live as a model of Christ to all others. Be a model, a Christian model to all other believers. And then Bart says, take a look at John 18. This will even deepen this emphasis on Christian modeling because it speaks of a bearing witness to confession. And it sounds like you get the two words saying the same thing, but uh, because you bear witness, isn't bearing witness uh, confessing? But uh, what it means is, is that uh, through practical wisdom as phronesis and practical ministry as praxis, bear witness to what you confess with your words. We are to bear witness to that which we confess in word. And then the final note, 3-3, three, 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 the working out of Christ as mediator. We live a newly oriented life in Christian modeling of Christ. Our lives are a reflection of God's divine renewal action. So our final inserted triad is that uh, Bart says negation opens affirmation. We negate mysticism and we affirm the expectation of God's judgment of grace. And then we are sustained by Christ's lordship. We are invited into an ethics of recognition, seeking the energia actualization of the kingdom. We seek the energia actualization of the kingdom. That leads to our being a true witness to our confession of Christ. That leads to a true confession, true witnessing of our confession of Christ as our Lord and Savior. An unbelievably powerful theological consideration of baptism. Bart gets into a lot of depth here. He does this in just 20 pages, 127 to 147.
we need to be extremely grateful for this gift of doctrine in the church dogmatics. And this final volume, volume 30, is a, no exception. It is profound. It is spirit-empowered, spirit-directed, Christ-centered, powerful teaching from Professor Bart. And we will pick up next time at page 148.